Hello everyone and welcome to another Less Than Ghost video. Today we're going to take a look at the upcoming changes to Farlight 84 and the things that we will be seeing in the upcoming year of 2024. Just recently there was a video that was released about all the changes that will be coming to the game that we love in the future and we're going to try to do something different here on the channel and do a reaction video to what was announced just recently. So let's check out, see the video, you'll get my first hand live reactions and we'll talk about the upcoming changes to the game. As you may or may not know, I am an official Farlight content creator for the game and have been for some time now. It's a game that I've been playing for many months since the global release and is a battle royale that I truly love. Recently things have been a little bit stale and if you've been watching me on Twitch you would have heard uh, kind of my critiques, criticisms and concerns, um, but again it is coming from a place that I hope we can improve and see improvements in the future because it is something that I do want to see survive and thrive in the upcoming years. So we're gonna go over this now. This is from the official Farlight channel um, and I'm gonna go over again the different things that are planned for 2024 and beyond. So let's go to the video and see if we like what we hear. Since its launch, Farlight 84 has gone through several major updates and optimizations. We've received a lot of love and support from our players, you guys, and yes, we've heard some critiques too. We're grateful for all of the encouragement and feedback. So before we start, that's one thing that I will say about the dev team when it comes to Farlight 84, is that they do a great job of communicating with the community, whether it's through Discord, through these update videos that come pretty frequently, uh, it does seem that they hear, listen, and acknowledge the community. Um, we might not always love the decisions that they made, but at least you can tell that they're they're actually hearing you. So I'll I'll give that right off the rip. After analyzing feedback from our community and comparing other battle royale titles, we see room for improvement in Farlight 84's playability. As a hero shooter, players need to master their shooting skills and cleverly combine hero abilities to gain an advantage. This involves okay. a deep understanding of hero skills, teamwork, reaction speed, shooting techniques, and tactical thinking. It's true, there's a lot involved. In Farlight 84, we've noticed the synergy between hero characters hasn't fully reached its potential. Looking back at battle records, hero combinations look similar all the time. We also realize the gunplay experience. Same with most games, but okay. So far, players often choose a fixed set of weapons because most guns feel similar and lack distinct situational uses. To address these issues, we plan to bring some evolutions to Farlight 84 gradually. The changes. So now, this is one thing that I have pointed out before, and we'll see where they go with it, but. The gradual changes to the updates and weapons, I think, is a bad idea. Uh, for instance, right now, the only gun that has been upgraded to the kind of new physics and mechanic is the is the AK, which means that it plays significantly different than every other gun. And in their goal of trying to make uh, a more diverse gun pool and uh, a more a better use of all different guns that is completely counterproductive and counterintuitive. Like you're making one gun com play completely different than every other. And in a way it's more difficult and you nerfed it. Um, yes, it's, you can increase the, or decrease the recoil and make it easier to use with attachments, but the base gun itself, no one's going to want to use. And until it's completely, um, like optimize all the way with all the attachments, it's not going to be used. So you're basically taking away the AK from the rest of the group. Like no one's going to use it. Uh, so we'll see if they have anything else in mind, but the way that they're gradually changing the guns and the physics and the mechanics, I think is a awful idea. In directions we discussed today aren't final. 
We plan to implement these designs gradually over the coming months. Yeah, I, changes, I don't think that's good. Not exactly match what we're discussing today, but we will provide detailed update content before each upcoming version through the What's Next series, just like what we're doing in the past few updates. Our ultimate goal is to make each game a completely unique adventure for that's everyone. That's good. That's needed. So we're all up to speed. Let's talk about the future evolution of Farlight 84. Let's do it. Optimizing gunplay in Farlight. Okay, here we go. We've noticed player feedback suggesting that the feel of using firearms in the game seems too similar across the board, prompting us to deeply rethink Bro. our current weapon framework. Our game currently features four types of guns, totaling 19 firearms, excluding MG7 and Rhino. Take assault rifles as an example. Apart from the AK, the recoil and spread of other guns are nearly non-existent. Yep. It makes these guns extremely versatile, effective in both close combat and sniping scenarios. However, submachine guns haven't been as fortunate. They lack a strong presence in the game. Designed for quick close-range engagement, their advantages lie in... I agree with that too, and there's less attachments. But when assault rifles also exhibit these traits, players seldom opt for submachine guns, which offer a lower cost-benefit ratio. Mm -hmm. This issue extends to the sniper rifles as well. In Farlight 84, we aim for a relatively short time to kill to encourage more intense gunfights. However, our design of sniper rifles hasn't supported this goal, leading to their underutilization. Interesting. Now, pause there. That's interesting. I'm wondering where they're getting their data from. Is it combined from mobile and PC? Um, or are they specifically speaking to maybe PC over mobile? Uh, because I don't feel like that's the case. So I play a mix of PC and mobile when I stream. I'm generally playing on PC. And whenever I do anything a little more on the competitive side, I do mobile. I do feel that snipers are underutilized with the mobile platform. I don't necessarily see that, at least in pub lobbies on PC. Um, I think the bar is a very popular weapon. Uh, there was a point where the Stellar Wind was used quite frequently. So that's an interesting point. I do know that a lot of people do like to use an AR with a longer scope. Uh, it kind of as an inter intermediary to a sniper or in place of one. But I don't feel like... I mean, a sniper rifle is going to be underutilized in any BR in general uh, versus an AR. I think the AR is going to be used the most. Uh, I think the point of a SMG being used, like, rarely if at all, that's a good point. And I do think that they can improve the usage there. Snipers, I feel like they're in a good place, but we'll see. Rivals with scopes for most combat situations. We've analyzed in-game weapon usage and found that most players use the Mad Rabbit in the early game and switch to an M4 for the rest of the match. This trade yeah. is not what we intend. Surprise, not Jupiter, but, yeah. Lack of gameplay depth and limited player strategies due to the uniformity of gunplay. Moreover, Farlight 84 is cross-platform between PC and mobile. Okay, there we go. To accommodate both, we've had to compromise on some high-quality sound effects for impact feedback. Gun sounds are a crucial part of this feedback, but in Farlight 84, they've been too subtle, often overshadowed by the system announcements. Additionally, okay. the gunshots lack variety, using trigger sounds and impactful firing noises. The sound of shell casings hitting the ground is also absent. This has resulted in a less immersive gunplay experience, failing to meet PC standards and still affecting low-end mobile devices. In summary, our goal is to diversify the gunplay experience. The changes in the AK's shooting parameters and the audio enhancements of some of the weapons... I'm not sure how big of a... Are the first baby oh, shall I pause it for this, I guess. I mean, I'm not sure how big of a deal gun audio is um maybe that's for a more competitive atmosphere uh i mean as long as you can hear 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 a weapon kind of understand where the sound is coming from and then on mobile that's not really a big issue because you have the the audio visual effect i i, I don't know at least me personally uh maybe on more of a casual thought process I, I could probably care less about the sound of the audio especially if that is used to better optimize mobile low-end mobile devices like they said so even when i'm on pc i'm not thinking about 
the sound of the the gun play um that could just be me but it's interesting that they brought that up as kind of a bigger talking point it feels more realistic with increased bullet trajectory randomness and a higher recoil cap aiming to provide a more immersive experience We've also updated the sound effects for the AK-77 and Bar 95. I mean, cool, but okay. A more realistic soundscape, especially on better equipment, where you experience clearer, more impactful feedback. For Firelight 84's aim assist feature, we're planning to make it more balanced. On mobile, we use aim assist to reduce the difficulty of getting started. Whether you're a mobile, PC, or console player, you'll be able to enjoy the thrill of shooting in the game. Notice the console there. When's that dropping? Arms to choose from. No more scarring the map just for an M4. Hero skill changes. Alongside adjusting gunplay, we want to encourage you to put more thoughts on strategy and skill in combat. Sure. To achieve this, we will be tweaking some hero abilities in tandem with our stronger gunplay framework aiming to offer a more fun and challenging gameplay. So far, okay. you generally rely on your hero's active skills and occasionally the jetpack. The jetpack, with its cool aerial maneuvers, offers high mobility. <laughs> However, we found that most players entering Farlight 84 weren't utilizing the jetpack effectively. Players already have two active skills to manage, adding the jetpack's two movement abilities while managing the skills while also managing to shoot often overwhelms new players. They end up random whatever lights up, confused about what happened after using a skill, let alone combining them all and coordinating with other teammates. The jetpacks also happen to indirectly weaken the gunplay experience. Due to its Does ability, it? we had to compromise on gunplay dynamics from the beginning of Farlight 84's design. Most guns are crafted with the premise of facing enemies flying around with jetpacks, and we had to lower difficulty in weapon handling, advanced prediction, and recoil control skills. Oh, Therefore, see, that's a bad thing. our upcoming adjustments, we plan a comprehensive optimization of hero abilities and the jetpacks. Future battles will involve more head-on confrontations, making a deep understanding of hero abilities crucial. With this change, we hope we will find more enjoyment in the seamless integration of skills and firearms, challenging yourselves with higher levels of gameplay. Okay, we need to <laughs> we need to pause that. So that sounds like they're nerfing the jetpacks, and that they're removing the importance of jetpack use um from the game uh i i, I might not could be completely understanding um what they're looking to do but just from what i heard there that sounds that sounds awful <laughs> i mean to be completely honest i think that is an awful change to me i feel like one of the draws of far light is the jetpack uh itself it creates a different level of mobility that you don't see in other battle royale games i think when it comes to the battle royale genre you need things different uh or you need to implement things that are different that set you apart from other games um and i feel like if you lessen the jetpack maneuverability um or the speed or the usage it's just going to be another simple hero based battle royale it might not seem like a big deal but to me i think it is uh, i also feel like in a way they're dumbing down the game like okay there's a lot going on sure but is it that much different than any other battle royale i would say no i think they're in a way underestimating their player base i i, I mean to think that a jetpack on top of hero skills and gunplay is too much for them that that seems strange to me i don't agree with it We'll have to see ultimately what this change is really going to entail. But upon hearing that for the first time, I don't like it at all. And I have a feeling that most of the community won't either. I, we'll have to see. Um, I think that was weird how they that wasn't talked about so much. I mean, I want to say that they talked about that the same amount of time as the sound of the gun play which seems almost irrelevant or inconsequential to me. So we'll see where that goes. But upon first hearing that, I think that that sounds really bad. <laughs> I think it's awful, but we'll see. Adding excitement to the map. 
Apart from optimizing existing heroes, weapons, and the in-game progression system, we're also working on new, fun gameplay mechanics to the Battle Royale mode in Farlight 84. Okay, there we go. By your feedback, we understand the desire for more exciting and surprising content. Yes. Compared to the wide array of activities and modes in other games, we realize that Farlight 84 currently has a relatively limited number of maps. While we've been working limited, there's only two, two maps, or really only one that's used. ...to bring diversity to the actual gameplay experience. So far, the map experience in Farlight 84 has been quite stable, with the ring closing periodically... Stable, it's stale. <laughs> ...scavenging for supplies and moving to safe zones. However, the stable experience has led to little variation in gameplay from match to match. Yep. Beyond finding resources and opening chests, there haven't been many clear objectives or opportunities for players to employ proactive strategies. We aim to make this experience better. The new gameplay feature we're designing will introduce mech bosses into the Battle Royale map That's very cool. at random locations. All right, sweet. Players will need to collaborate to defeat these formidable foes. However, there's a twist. Players can also attack each other, adding a layer of strategy yeah. and competition. Once the boss For soldier players is ready, will like that. You can take control of it, essentially turning it into a giant vehicle. Imagine the thrill of piloting a mech boss using its abilities to dominate the battlefield. This will make the gameplay more exciting, okay. strategic, and full of tactical depth. The addition of this new feature will introduce more variables to the battle, enriching the combat experience and making it more exciting for players. That's an interesting point. Let's talk about that. So there you say... If you might be a small group that understands, but I say first soldier players has a, another fantastic battle royale, short lived. Um, but it is kind of like almost a world boss within the battle royale kind of gameplay. So I, it'll be interesting though if there is a point in time where everyone's safe, like if there's a bubble almost that you can enter, you can fight this boss, and then after that. The bubble disappears and there's just hell that breaks loose. Or if you're going to have to find a way to maneuver around the battlefield and keep an eye out on not only the boss, but your enemies as well. Uh, also, too, how over no, overpowered, how powerful is this kind of new vehicle going to be? Is it going to be, as I was mentioning uh, or alluding to, overpowered? Um, we have seen in other games, like Fortnite, where there were mechs and... Great idea in theory, but once they were implemented, they were one of the most hated things that were ever introduced into the game. So it's interesting that they're taking a lot of ideas from other battle royales, which again, that seems to be a theme in this, um, <laughs> that they're taking, I think he even mentioned it in the beginning, uh, feedback from other battle royales. Well, they're taking a lot from other battle royales and then they're reducing the uniqueness of one of their main things in the jetpacks so we'll see i will say though that this is a very cool thing that they're doing and i look forward to seeing how it unfolds the key areas of evolution for farlight 84 in the future we understand that these changes will require some time for you to adapt and adjust and that's exactly why we're sharing these ideas early on with you the game is evolving beyond just upgrading shields engaging in shootouts or using jetpacks to escape you need to employ more thoughts and strategy, and you'll encounter more unknown challenges and fun. Also, okay. let me reiterate that these plans and ideas may not fully align with the final updates, but we'll share more detailed information about the final changes for each respective update when they arrive. To validate these adjustments more swiftly, we're planning to continue to implement updates every month. On top of this, our dev team every month? Okay. will continue to listen to your feedback and make timely adjustments. So can they do well? More enjoyment and discover new strategies alongside this evolution. And as always, we welcome your honest feedback to help us make Farlight 84 even further. This is Lazy Cast signing off, and I'm excited to share more with you in the coming months. Have a lovely December, and I'll see you again soon. All right. Happy holidays. And happy holidays to all of you as well. Uh, so interesting. Um, they didn't go too much into new the new map. I know the new map is set to drop in early 2024. Uh, not only 
that new map is going to be a massive uh, implementation into the game, but there needs to be map rotation. It has to be a map rotation. Because at this point, game is globally out for about a year. It's been available for many others much longer. To only have, at that point, three maps, and if you're only playing one or two of them, over and over again, and you, you need that rotation. Uh, I didn't even know for months until months after that there was a second map, but it's never it's never played. So I think that's going to be one of the bigger things as well um, to break up the you know they said stability. I call it staleness. Um, we need that new map. We need that map rotation. So I was surprised that wasn't uh, discussed any further, but. Um, yeah, all right, that was the video. There you have it, everyone. That was the live reaction to the 2024 sneak peek to Farlight 84. A bunch of new things that will be coming up or at least planned for the future. Uh, really, there's some good, bad, and ugly in there. The good being that there's going to be some sort of boss event that within every match you're able to kind of track down, take on, and you know receive spoils from in terms of a new vehicle via the mech the bad being the gradual updates to the guns and their recoil and their feel the physics i think that that really needs to be something that is held off until every single gun can be updated at once i know that might be kind of a big undertaking for the dev team but the fact that you're doing it kind of one at a time takes away from I think you wanting to use those guns. The ugly for me is the fact that it looks like they're doing a lot of tweaking to the jetpacks in the future, which I take as a bit of a nerf. It looks like that they kind of want to go away from that being one of the bigger points of gameplay and focusing more on the gunplay and the battles with that. Um, I think that's an awful idea. I think that the jetpacks is something that's unique to the game and brings a different element versus other battle royales. Uh, I think it's kind of perfectly balanced the way it is now. So to either remove that or make it something that is not a big deal or a big usage anymore, I think is, is bad. So if you did like this video, uh, please be sure to uh, give a like by hitting that thumbs up button. Drop a comment down below. I love hearing from you and I try to respond to every single one of you. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you everyone and have a great day.